In this tutorial, we'll discuss the photoelectric effect. Let's start with some metal, and we'll use silver as an example. And we're going to do this in a vacuum, because we're going to be looking for electrons that jump out of metal as a result of shining light on the metal. So first, we'll start with red light. Let's just say 650 nanometers and we shine the red light on the silver and we get no electrons produced and we can do this at low intensity say one watt of power or we can do this at high intensity say a hundred watts and there's still no electrons produced regardless of the intensity of light so now we change the wavelength of the light to 515 nanometers this is green so the frequency is now higher and again, we get nothing in terms of electrons coming out of the metal, either at low intensity or at high intensity. So we continue to reduce the wavelength of the light, and we go into the ultraviolet region of the spectrum, and we find that there's a cutoff at 263 nanometers. If you have a wavelength below that, then you get electrons coming out of the metal. Now at low intensity you'll get a few electrons produced and at high intensity you'll get a lot of electrons produced. Now the low intensity could be just one watt of power. You'll get a few electrons. Now remember even at a hundred watts or a thousand watts of either red light or green light you don't get anything no matter what the intensity is but as soon as you get to the 263 nanometer wavelength below that then you start getting electrons this experiment is done in a vacuum by the way which is how you're able to detect electrons coming out of the metal in air they would just quickly recombine with the molecules in the air now Einstein won the Nobel Prize in physics for his explanation of the photoelectric effect and he made the following points. First of all, it takes a certain amount of energy for an electron to escape the metal. And the electrons absorb this energy from the light. So to make an analogy here, if you want to escape the Earth's gravitational field, you have to have a rocket that has a certain amount of energy that will get you to escape velocity. So you can have enough energy to escape the Earth's pull. It's the same way with electrons in metal. There are bonds between the electrons and the positively charged nucleus of the atoms that are in silver. And so you need to have a certain amount of energy in order to pull the electron free out of the metal. So the contribution from Einstein here is to say that light is made of photons or particles. And they have a certain amount of energy given by E equals HF, where H is Planck's constant and F is the frequency. So the higher intensity means you have more photons of light. So anytime an electron absorbs a photon, it absorbs all the energy from that photon. So if the photon doesn't have enough energy to kick the electron out of the metal, the electron never gets out. But once the energy of the photon is high enough, then the electron can emerge from the metal. And the more photons you have, the more electrons are produced. So let's think about this in terms of conservation of energy. The energy of the photon goes into two places. Number one, work to free the electron from the metal. This is called the work function. And number two, the kinetic energy of the electron. To go back to our example about the rocket taking off from the Earth, once you have enough kinetic energy to get out of the Earth's gravitational pull, the rest of your kinetic energy is going to go into speed. So if you launch a rocket with just barely enough kinetic energy to escape the Earth's gravity, it has very little speed once it gets out of orbit. But if you give it a lot of extra kinetic energy, then once it breaks free of the Earth's gravitational pull, it'll be moving faster. Well, the same thing is true of electrons. So as you increase the frequency of the light 
you increase the energy in a photon and so the electron comes out faster. The greater the frequency, the faster the electrons are moving once they get out of the metal. So the equation for this is that HF, the energy in the photon, equals phi, that's the work function, plus one-half mv squared, the kinetic energy of the electron. Let's move to an example problem. Radiation with a wavelength of 200 nanometers strikes a metal surface in a vacuum. Ejected electrons have a maximum speed of 7.22 times 10 to the fifth meters per second. What is the work function of the metal in electron volts? So we start with our equation. H times frequency equals phi plus one half mv squared. Now we were given the wavelength of the light. We have to convert that over into frequency. So we say the speed of light is equal to wavelength times frequency convert over to frequency of 1.5 times 10 to the 15th Hertz. Now we can plug this into our equation over on the left. So we have Planck's constant 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds and you should memorize Planck's constant by the way. Then multiply times the frequency is equal to phi plus one-half times the mass of the electron, that's another one to memorize, times v squared. This is the velocity that was given in the problem. So when we do all the math, we calculate out phi, the work function, to be 7.57 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Now one electron volt is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So we convert there and we get 4.73 electron volts. So that's the work function of the metal. That's the amount of energy that it took to get the electron out of the metal. And by the way, this is the work function of silver. Now just one last point here. In the problem it said ejected electrons have a maximum speed of 7.22 times 10 to the fifth meters per second. That implies that some of the electrons are coming out at a slower speed and that may be the case because not all electrons are bound with the same strength to the metal. So work function is defined as the amount of energy that it takes to get the most loosely bounded electrons out of the metal.